Hickok 45 here. I'm going to give you some basic information on the difference between special cartridges and magnum cartridges. I would try to keep it simple. This might uh, give a lot of people information, but if you're new to guns and you keep hearing 38 special and 44 special and they'll shoot in a 44 magnum and you're not sure why, why is there a difference and all those, those questions uh, may be still roaming around your mind. Uh, Take a look, because I'm going to try to explain that, all right? Well, first came the 38 Special, which is this cartridge. And then first came the 44 Special, which is this cartridge. Then later came the 44 Magnum and the 357 Magnum. You know, they're, they're partners. So these two guns fire 38 Special. This is an older one from the 60s, and of course the 38 Special is a very old cartridge. It goes back to the turn of the century, around uh, I think 1900 or so, uh, 1898, 1899, long in there. 38 Special. Okay, then, and uh, I guess it was 1935, along came the 357 Magnum. Wow, Magnum sounds powerful, doesn't it? I believe that was based on uh, a uh, a large container of wine, bottle of wine, is called a Magnum, and this is bigger. This is bigger than the 38 Special case, so that's really the only difference in terms of looking at it. Okay, so it's more powerful and it's longer. We're going to kind of give you a look at the the difference over here. Let's just do that. Okay, now right here, I've got my handy arrow pointer here. I have some cases lined up. We'll start with the 357 and 38. Here you have just the empty cases. And 38, this is, I'm pointing at a 357, and that's a 38 special. Then you have the loaded cartridges, that's a 357, and then that's a 38 special. So the 357 Magnum, loaded and unloaded, are there together. Then on either side, you have the smaller counterpart, the 38 special. Okay, 38 special, 38 special. If you can tell there, they're really the same diameter, the same case. The only difference is the 357 Magnum case is a little longer. Oftentimes you'll have the same bullet even loaded in the case. It's just the case is longer. It will hold a little more powder for that reason, right? Okay, same case though, just a little longer. Stepping over to the 44s, same, same thing. These two in the middle, you have an empty 40 four magnum case then you have a loaded 44 magnum case okay you know on either side you've got over here a, uh, a 44 special loaded round and then over here you have a case that's uh, not loaded in 44 special so you, you can see for yourself the difference in length of all these so the longer cases are the magnums the shorter cases are the the specials they're not a lot shorter just a little bit okay and we'll talk about why they're shorter here but that's the difference. So they're the same cases, basically, just a little bit longer, both in 44 and in the 38 size uh, rounds. Now, people loaded up the 38 Special that were hand loaders to some pretty hot rounds. Same with the 44, the 44 Special, rather. Elmer Keith was famous for that. Uh, he would load some really hot 44 Special rounds. And uh, in fact, he was very instrumental in bringing about the 44 Magnum for that reason. We needed a more powerful gun to handle what he was loading, so Smith came out with that. But a uh, couple of things there. You can load up a 44 Special till it's as hot as you really want to shoot, probably, and hot enough for what you're doing. Now, Mark Keith just about did that. Blew up some guns experimenting. Uh, you just need a more well-built firearm to handle it, for one thing. And then, what do you end up with? Okay, let's say you, uh, I don't have a 44 Special. Let's say this is a 44 Special uh, handgun, not built as heavily uh, and as strongly as a 44 Magnum. And I put in some really hot, some of those Elmer Keith loads. Well, I'm taxing the gun. It might blow up. So what they did when they made the 44 Magnum was they lengthened the case. Let's grab one. It's a longer case. And so if this were a 44 Special, it would stop right about there. You know, at the chamber mouth, it, would, it, would, it wouldn't fire. You couldn't close it up and fire it, see? So that's one advantage of making it longer, and uh, it makes it safer. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about with the 38. Now this is a 38 special, and here's a newer 38 special. Let's try to put a 357 Magnum in it. See, it's exactly the same principle. When we made the case longer so we can make it more powerful, we don't want to be putting it back in these 38 specials because it's a 357 Magnum. And see, it won't fit. That's as far as it'll go. Cylinder will not close. 
See, I can load it up all day. Doesn't matter with 357 Magnum rounds. It's not going to close. It's not going to shoot. Okay, so the chamber is not long enough for a 357 Magnum. So you you achieve that that purpose there. You uh, you have a longer case. It can't be chambered in the old 38 Special. Even though you could take this shorter case, the 38 Special case, and really achieve the same power factor probably in most cases. Now there is an issue of uh, with less case space, you get more pressure and, you know, depending on the size of the bullet and all those sorts of things. So you can't necessarily create every load in a 357 Magnum in a 38 Special case, but you could duplicate most of them probably with, uh, you know, the right powder. It's just that that protects us right there. It, it takes care of the situation. We're, we're not going to put a 357 Magnum round in a uh, 38 Special revolver, especially when these older 38 Special revolvers. This one is not even rated for plus P. It uh, goes back into the 60s, so we can't get a 357 Magnum in there. Okay, well, chamber. All right, so that's the, the main difference, uh, length and power, generally speaking. Now, if you load your own stuff, see, you can't control the power, whether it's a 38 or a 357. But off the shelf, your 38 Special is not going to be as powerful and although you can get some pretty good rounds, in plus P especially, but 357 is generally going to be more powerful. They will fire. So, first question on the quiz would be, which of these four guns, these are 357s, these are 38 Specials, which of these guns would I be able to fire these 38 Specials in? Answer, all of them. Of course, the 38 or the 357 Magnum chamber is longer, so obviously the 38 Special is going to chamber yeah you know close up I could fire it right see so in the 357 I can fire either one that's why people will tell you a 357 is a really handy revolver uh, you know back in the 60s 70s 80s uh, you know, before the semi-automatics took over <laughs> yeah, the recommendation generally was if you wanted a handgun, get a 357 Magnum. It's great. You can shoot some pretty hot rounds in it, or you can shoot some light 38 Specials in it. It's a very versatile, and these are cheaper as well. And anybody can shoot them. They don't kick at all, especially in a gun with any size and heft to it. So it's a really versatile gun. So a four inch or a six inch 357 Magnum was a really common recommendation back in the day, and it still is. You want a revolver, you can't go wrong that way. You can fire Ammo, there's hardly a gun shop in the country right now where you couldn't find some 38 Special or 357 ammunition, guarantee you. And these, these uh, 357 Magnum revolvers will fire either one. All right, really nice. Now, what I do with my hand loading, and I have for, oh, 30 years, I guess, I just load 357 cases. That's all I use. I don't complicate matters. I don't really reload 38 at all. Never have. If I want to reduce power, I'll just reduce my load, my 357. I shoot a moderate magnum load, and I can shoot it comfortably in about any 357 magnum revolver I have. It won't chamber in a 38, uh, but I don't shoot that much 38. It's like, why? Uh, I shoot just enough to stay practiced with like this little thing. I, uh, I just buy some factory ammo every now and then. Okay, a couple boxes a year is all I need. So I just keep it simple, and I load everything in 357. And if I want to shoot a 38 caliber bullet, I generally do it in a 357. So it's the kind of a why not. So that's kind of the way that works. All right. Let me uh, let me show you here real quick. Let me put 357s in here. I'll put three in, and then I'll put 338s. Now this is not necessarily advisable <laughs> if you're trying to learn to shoot. I'll start with the uh, 357 Magnums. Oh, we have some targets here. We had some targets. <laughs> oh, nice. You know, you can probably tell. Whoops. Even in video land, that's pretty, pretty powerful, pretty stout. Now that was three. Now this one is not going to be quite as stout. See, it barely knocked that around. <laughs> oh, it didn't knock it around. See that? So those are really light 38s, those last three. But that's what gives you the versatility, and that's why uh, 357 Magnum is one of the most popular revolvers around. Okay, you have the same principle with the, uh, the 44. 
I will put in, let's see, I've got over here, I will put in, uh, let's see, three 357 or 44 Magnum rounds. Remember, they're a little longer. And I grab three of these 44 Special. And these are actually factory loads I have had forever. So I just bring them out. 44 Special factory ammo is usually pretty expensive. It's, you don't see it everywhere. All right, now I believe, okay, the Magnums are going first again. Okay, now these three are going to be light. <laughs> it hit the turkey and didn't knock it over. So light. It went over. You can tell the difference now. <laughs> Finally got there. Bing. Knocked it over. Okay, that was also a lesson in how a really hot round shoots a little bit lower. Those were some hot factory rounds, and I was hitting uh, those misses. I was hitting low on the turkey. I'm not sure what I was hitting. It sounded like I was hitting the stand, the steel stand. And then the specials were printing a little bit higher. Uh, but you could tell a difference probably. That's the versatility and uh, of the 44 Magnum, actually. Now, again, I don't have a 44 Special, partly for the same reason I discussed earlier. I don't, uh, I don't need one. I, if I want to shoot lighter loads, 44 specials, I shoot them in my 44 magnums. You know, those little 3 inch uh, 44 magnums I have, I shoot probably about half and half. I'll shoot specials about half the time. So that's just kind of the quick and dirty of it. Uh, I, I, this is a little different, but the 40 caliber and the 10 millimeter are kind of the same way. We don't have the same uh, nomenclature terminology, but you know, a 40 is just a short 10 millimeter, shorter 10 millimeter. That's the only difference. And you actually can fire a 40 in a 10 millimeter, at least a Glock 20. Uh, I've experimented with it. It's not advised that you do that, but, uh, but it'll actually work in a pinch. So that's kind of the same exact situation. You have the exact same case, just a little bit longer in the 10 millimeter because it's more powerful, hold more powder and all that kind of thing. So if you wonder why people are, are always talking about how a uh, special will fire in a magnum or a magnum and a special and you're, you're a little bit confused about that. Hopefully that clears it up for you a little bit. Just a little bit longer case and a little more power generally speaking. Special versus magnum. So hopefully that was of some help to you. Life is good.